in two uh, two lectures, two point two, two point three, yeah, two point one, two point two, and uh, I have uh, I have some questions to ask. Okay. So I have gone through general... all the lectures, sir. But last two lectures was means I didn't understand that. Okay. So so uh, I'm just curious about this. Uh, when will you actually start watching the next week content? Like for suppose say uh, we release week two, the last Friday, right? So when exactly people will start watching week two? So actually we watch, but we don't understand. Then again watch, then don't understand. Then again, so uh, that's why it's taking time. Hmm. So so when do you start? Like. Will it be on Friday when whenever we release the content, or maybe after the deadline of week one, or just now before two or before this session or something like that? No, I started from fifteen, uh, week two. In this, so, uh, uh, after the yeah. week one deadline, right? Yes, after yes, the week after one. week yes. one deadline. Oh, okay. because uh, I started on Saturday. Saturday itself. Friday it was released, and Saturday I started. Okay. Yeah. So, do most of you agree with uh, Sanjeev or uh, Purnendu? Like, how are you guys? See, this is not mandatory to answer. I agree. This is nowhere related to stats too. Also, but I am just curious to know my my audience, like maybe the crowd, so that I can. Stats. In couple of two is past, sir. Actually, there are a lot of lectures, and some are means really mm -hmm. time taking. I mm -hmm. think that's possible. The reason not everyone can complete it. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Usually, yeah. Like, I usually start when it's released. So, so if it is released, then I start doing the activity and so on. Okay. Good. Good. And like, uh, even like, I would like say, sir, like, uh, even the session is keep for week two, and week three is released. Yeah. Uh, in Max, in Max, when we usually had like when it's released the next morning we had the session so yes. we roughly an, had an idea what's going on in the week so it was much helpful but uh, like like it's the day is weird then the week two open sessions are there so it's hard because we have to do it all on our own hmm. like so uh, how many of you know that the, there are already uh, Few live sessions which we release, we are releasing in the portal. I saw them, sir. Yes, sir. Like if I have some doubts, I, I go through the previous year's term. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. Yeah. We recommend everyone to go through the live sessions of previous terms. So in week two also, we might have released two sessions. Sir, I have a question. Few days ago, I received mm -hmm. a. Email saying that we are forming a study group for statistics too, and there we will be mm -hmm. working towards some of the problem solving techniques, and uh, it will be a separate yes. study group from this one. So, miss yes. any context on that because I submitted that form. So, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, uh, are you a repeat? Actually, last time I tried to drop it, but I was unable. I was unable to drop that stats two course because I was having stats two and math two together. So later I realized, but that day was over. So I okay. Took it. Okay. So uh, so we, we we are doing some extra classes for repeaters. Hmm. Okay. So it's like uh, it's like complete. How can you say it's like a school kind of uh, teaching. Hmm where uh, we come teach a topic and the last one hour we will provide you some questions mm -hmm. on that particular topic and you're, you have to go home solve it submit back to us mm -hmm. we will grade it and that's how the sessions will go so it will be like uh, uh, three sessions per week or kind can other people also join that if it is possible? Uh, no see because the if the crowd increases no? So then the correction and all will kill a lot of time and it will be difficult. So, uh, so, so, so my concern is since uh, for most of the direct entry uh, diploma students, we haven't gone through the stats one. So we have to rely on the different sources, open sources. <laughs> See what what we what we feel is as long yeah. as you are 
doing starts to for the very first time mm-hmm. we feel that you don't need a spoon feeding kind of a strategy whatever no, no, we are no. provide yeah See, uh, spoon feeding is something like uh, when everything is there at your expense without taking much efforts but here what i'm telling is like some of the concepts which are there for stats one hmm. which people have studied in a long like the uh, like a uh, long period of for over a long period of time but we have to cover that along with the other concepts also so okay. like we have to search here and there what things will fit in and then coming back again and solving the questions over here mm-hmm. so, but how does it help you the, uh, how does these sessions help you out? see these sessions are basically as i'm saying these are kind of kind of spoon feeding sessions so it's like uh, we will discuss only one topic and we will solve some three four problems and we will give some three four three problems at most to yeah, make them along, solve see along with the job it is like like uh, it is get it it like along with the job you have to search other things also and then come back and like mm-hmm. so okay, okay, we will more... see we will see that yeah yeah it, we will see that uh, mm-hmm. let, let's let's get it no, i'm i'm just tell, i'm just telling if you can sir, also take into consideration sir, sir one week mm-hmm. sir you were saying something about this open session which you've been updated in the portal mm-hmm. where can we see under supplementary content under live sessions so there is a new 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 tab uh the tab name is live session notes yeah live session notes we have only uh, as of now it's week 1 which we had recently in the in this term is that so yeah you are talking one, about uh, the previous uh, live sessions right yeah that is not i am not able to see in my portal it only shows week 1 and when i clicked it it was showing the notes which was of uh, the that okay. uh, that uh, we had okay, whatever okay. live session we had yeah got it so okay maybe it got me so okay let me check on this it should be it should be there and uh, also there are notes they are not uh, the yeah, live yeah, session yeah. videos right I, i got it i got it just now i have seen uh, okay. we have to uh, update it so okay. give us some time maybe by tomorrow we'll update it okay okay Yeah. So, so means update means where I will get this update about the sessions. You you won't get any update like if you open the portal you will see a new tab. No no I am not asking about that I am asking that a group is group. Okay. Ah, uh, Purnendu, can we have this discussion at the end? Yeah sure no problem sir. I don't yes. want to. I will answer you but I just want that answer to be said at the end. Okay 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 okay. okay. so i request everyone for the next one hour or one and a half hour at least at least 50 minutes i just wanted to focus on week to contents and we will discuss solve and understand week to in a much deeper manner okay so i just wanted to uh, start our discussion with uh, continuing week 1 so in week 1 Uh, we might have seen if there are two random variables and both the random variables have some randomness inside them and we have looked at the collective randomness like what happens to this random variable what what is happening to this random variable and jointly how these random variables are behaving or uh, what are the probabilities if both the random variables comes into the picture we looked at the joint probability mass function and then we looked at if i condition one random variable how is the distribution of other random variable is changing so is there any change or is it same as or is it independent of the other random variable so this independent thing is pretty much useful for us to understand because when i am conditioning if there are some two random variables and if i say if i know that if one random variable is independent of the other so then in considering regards of computation 
as well as understanding about the random variables will become much more easier so once i know that x and y are independent to each other then even though i condition one random variable it doesn't affect the other random variable which gives one important property or uh, we can say one note important note that if x does not or uh, if the randomness or if pmf i will talk if the pmf of x is not varied by conditioning on y okay so what do i mean by this statement is if i condition on y saying that y takes this value y takes that value or y is taking greater than some value y is taking less than some value if i impose some condition on y and look at the probabilities of x then if it is not changing if it is not varying that implies then it implies that implies that the conditional distribution distribution of x which is x given y is equals to some small y is equal to marginal of x which is probability that x is okay i have made a very complicated statement rather i just wanted to simplify this so if i shorten this you uh, you might have seen in the lectures also those who have watched the lectures so i say x and y are independent to each other that means x will not be dependent on y and y will not be dependent on x i say x and y are independent to each other if the joint pmf so this is joint pmf is equal to product of marginals okay for all x1 x2 belongs to okay for all x1 belongs to the range of x and for all x2 belongs to range of y so this is product of marginals marginal pmf okay uh, the statement wise this is much simpler statement so x and y are independent i say x and y are independent if joint pmf is equals to product of marginals but what do i mean by this is the above statement so even though if x and y are independent to each other that means x will not be dependent on y and y will not dependent on y will not be dependent on x so if i vary y or condition y it will not affect x in any ways so if i condition on y or if you don't condition at all both are same so the pmf of x will not change even though you condition or you didn't condition so that 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 is the second thing so even though you condition means conditional pmf so this fx of y x2 of x1 so even though you condition y will not affect x so it is it will be simply equal to fx of x1 which is marginal so conditional pmf 
will be equal to marginal. For all x1 and x2, for all x1 belongs to Px and x2 belongs to Py. So this is one more point. So this is this. If x and y are independent, so we I have uh, given you two statements. The first statement is the joint PMF will be equal to product of marginals, and the second statement is conditional PMF is will be equal to marginal PMF. So you can you can prove one. So you, you can take this and can be pro can prove the second statement. So think about this. So this is this is also very easy. So it's not two different statements. It it is more or less the same same statement said in two different ways. Okay. So I will quickly give that proof also. From the next time you should think about this proofs. So whenever a statement, so as I said, the stats two definitely will not work. Uh, the strategies to uh, cope up in statistics two is not same as what you have followed in earlier courses. This requires understanding and intuition as well as problem solving. So when I said the joint is equals to marginal, so this is given to us. So this is given and what we know actually how can I write the joint so how can I write the joint in terms of mar marginal and conditional conditional by marginal conditional, by marginal. conditional into marginal into marginal conditional uh, into marginal yes x1 f of y x2 so this we know. So you see, this is given. Let me say this is equation one. This is we know. So this is true for any two random variables, whether it is dependent or independent. This is true. So from one and two, the left hand side are equal. So the right hand side should be equal. So equating one and two from one and two, we get. So the right hand side should be equal fx of x1 into fy of y1, ah sorry x2 equals to fx of y is equals to x2 of x1 fy of x2. So you see this and this will get cancelled and we will get fx of x1 is equals to fx of y is equals to x2 of x1 which is what the second statement says. So this is marginal is equals to condition. Okay. okay, so both both the statements are equivalent to each other. So even though you can take the second one and you can go to the first one also. So that, that is just follow the steps in the reverse order. Okay, this is about independence. So, if they are independent, so these two statements will follow, and these two statements will give us uh, more understanding about the two random variables. Okay, so that's about independence. This is one more, uh, what we say, one more concept related to this joint random variable. So let's let's do some problem. So those who have gone through 2.1 and 2.2, if you have any AQ related kind of doubts, you can ask. I will take the same example, or else I will take my own example. So question number three, AQ one, AQ 2.1, question number three. Okay. So AQ 2.1, question number three. Let me just open it. So I'll just read out the question. Uh, let me know if that is correct. Uh, uh, let x and y be two independent random variable. Uh -huh. Okay. Such that. Okay. Yeah. okay. So now it is given that uh, there are two random variables x and y. So this is given. I am writing the given. 
So question it it is given in the question that x and y are uh, random variables and such that f x of y is equals to t two of t one is equals to zero point zero two and the marginal so this is given to us f y of y is equals to t two is point six point six and we have to find f x of t one and it is given x and y r it is given that x and y r independent random variables okay so if they are independent random variables what will this be condition see if they are independent random variables what are the two statements we know fxy is equal to fx into fy ah okay let me start from there only fxy T one T two is equal to f x of T one into f y of T two. T two. Then we know conditional is equal to joined by marginal. Ah yeah, conditional is equal to joined by marginal, but I have joined here. Ah yeah, so it is marginal into conditional. So marginal into conditional. Hmm. This is equals to f x of t one times f y of t two. T two. Yes. Now what? Now we have been given conditional and hmm. one of the marginals. Hmm. So this is marginals given. would get cancelled. Yeah, marginals okay. get cancelled and this and this will FX, get cancelled. Oh. Huh. So we get conditional equals f x of t one. Point zero two. Point zero two. Hmm. So this is given to us in the question itself. It is point zero two. So therefore, f x of t one is equals to zero point zero two. So this is using the statement one. Okay, what if I use the statement two? What the, what do the statement two says? Conditional P M F is equals to the marginals, right? Yes, sir. so if that if that is the statement i know this is conditional yes no yes yes sir yes sir so this conditional should be equal to original marginal of x marginal of x so if that is given as 0.02 what will this be 0.0 0.0.0.0. So there are see using both I can find the answer. Okay. So how much time did I take uh, in the second method and how much time we took in the first method to writing down all these things? Okay. So ultimately both reach to the correct answer, but you should be time efficient also. Okay. So that is question three. i just want to take a slightly complicated yeah so let me do aq 2.1 question number 2 okay so i am going to do this is the second example aq 2.1 question 2 so there is a joint pmf table given to us so 
just hold on for it. Let me draw. So a joint PMF table is given to us. This is x1 and this is x2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 16, 1 by 16, 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, k. 1 by 16, 1 by 16. 16. So, uh, okay, this is 1 by 16. So, this is the joint PMF. They said it is a joint PMF table. And in the options, they have given us few things. So, two options are independent and not independent. And option A and B are so f x y of one comma three one comma three is zero. equals to zero. It's not zero. A Q two point one question to f x of one times f x of three is one option, and the other option is f x of one comma two is f x of one times f y of 2 okay so these are the four options and we have to decide how many of them are correct and we have to choose the correct options so how do we start this particular problem so we we'll start so first we have to find the value of k that is k only right one three that is k yeah yeah, yeah so first we have to find the value of k yeah okay okay so that is correct so as they said it is a joint PMF and there is an unknown variable sitting inside my joint PMF. I have to find that unknown value. So the step one should be like find, find k. So if I have to find k, the next question is how will I find k? Sir, uh, the Yes. So how? How, how is, uh, I, I know one property of joint PMF table, which says sum of all entries one. should be equal to 1. So how many entries are there in my table? 9. 9. 8 plus 9. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So 3 times 3, 9. So I have to add all of them. So 1 by 4. 1 by 16 plus 1 by 16 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus there is k plus 1 by 16 plus 1 by 16. So this should be equal to 1. So if I add all this, what will I get? So adding again. So if you want to add with different denominators, okay. So these all are some calculation tips you can say. Make the denominators same, okay, quickly that too. So see the highest denominator that is visible in, the, in your number, 16. So how can I write 16. 1 by 4 such that my denominator will become 16? 4 by 16. 4 by 16. 1 by 16. So again, 4, 4 by 16. 2 by 16. 2 by 16. 2 by 16 plus 16. K plus 1 by 16 plus 1 by 16. Now that the denominator is same, you just have to add the numerator. Okay, all the numerators. So if I add, what will I get? 16 by 16. 4 plus 1 plus 1, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 2, 12, 12 plus 2, 14, 15 and 16. So I will get 16 by 16, which will be equal to 1. So 1 plus k should be 1. So from here, what should be the k value? 0. 0. 0. So just go back. And replace this k by 0 and this is your joint pmf table now what we have to check is we have to check 
from the options so whether this is true or this is true or it is it independent or not independent so the first thing is first option says fxy of 1 comma 3 so what is fxy of 1 comma 3 Sorry, it should be x1, x2. Zero. Zero. Yeah. So let me take x and y. Okay. So this, let me let me sol solve by options now. So option A says me fx, y, whether this is true or not. So the left hand side is very easy. From the table itself, we have computed that is equal to k and k is equal to zero. So how do I get the right hand side? For that, I need to compute True. the marginals. Marginals you have to compute. Right? So this is the table. And how do I compute the marginals? Sum of, 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 of sum the rows and sum the columns. Correct? Basically, what we don't want, we will sum over that. Mm -hmm. Correct. And this will be the complete joint, joint table. So here you are going to get fx of x. So the marginal of x you are going to get here. So I have to add 1 by 4, 1 by 4 and 0. It will be 1 by 2. 1 1 by by 2. 2. Right. And I have to add 1 by 16, 1 by 8 and 1 by 16. What will I get? 1 by 4. 1 by 4. 1 by 4. So we'll do it like 1 by 8 is again 2 by 16. So if you add the numerator, so it will be 4 by 16, 1 by 4. So the last one will be 1 by 4 again. So the same addition. Now, the column wise, I am going to get the marginal distribution of y. So again, I have to add rows. 1 by 4, 1 by 16, and 1 by 16. 3 by 8. 3 by 8. 3 by 8. Correct. So 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 8. 1 by 2. 1 by 2. 1 by 2? Yeah, 1 by 2. So 1 by 16 plus 1 by 16. 1 by 8. 1 by 8. 1 by 8. And this will be, so either you add this row or this column, it should it will sum up to 1. Okay. Uh, now, what will be fx of 1? So what, which number represents fx of 1? Half. Half. This is. 1 by 2. This is fx of 1. And what is f fy of 3? 1 by 8. 1 by 8. fy of 3 is 1 by 8. Okay. So this is half into 1 by 8. So are these equal or? No. Not equal. Not equal. No. Is not 0 equal. equals to 1 by 2 into 1 by 8? No. So which implies? Option A is false or incorrect. So what did what do option B says? Option B says fx y of one comma two is equal to fx of one times f i of two. Okay. So fx of fx y of one comma two. What is fx y of one comma two? One by four. So one comma two. This is the number I want. So it is 1 by 4. And fx of 1 is? 1 by 2. 1 by 2. 1 by 2. And now I need uh, for the option B, fy of 2. Fy 1 of by 2. 2. Half. 1 by 2. Which is again 1 by 2. So this is 1 by 2. So this half into half will be 1 by 4. And the left hand side is also 1 by 4. Both are equal. So what this implies? Option B is true. It means they are independent, right? Now tell me. No, I wantedly didn't emphasize one line in my independent statement. 
now tell me whether the two random variables are independent or not no. independent no not no. independent not independent not independent yeah so why for all the values of so it has to satisfy has for to satisfy all the values and it's yeah. failing for one case right so even if we don't say from zero if, hmm? even if we don't solve zero. then also if we see zero then we can give the statement correct 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 so whatever the two statements you said both are correct and you can apply so when i am defining this independent case so there will be one small sir whenever we see zero and one of the marginals are not zero correct one of the marginals it's not that uh, always whenever we see zero in the box uh, we can say that they are uh, not independent no see uh, when you compute the marginal and mm -hmm. if one of the marginal is zero then that mm -hmm. will not be in the range at all and that will not be in the joint pmf table at all Now, now we have this k as zero. Yeah, k as zero, but but that's not a marginal. No, no marginal no, will come not to zero. Point. So can you ex explain the statement about like what you just? Yeah, I will, I will, I will repeat it. I will repeat okay. it. But I just wanted to emphasize this. See, when you read or when you listen to this uh, statements like x and y are independent to each other, if this, this, this is, you will definitely skip that for all. thing in between because for we know and all is also we know so those english statements we will definitely miss and that will cost you a lot so when we say for all x1 and x2 so this should hold for so if i have in x i have some 10 i, I if uh, my x can take 10 values and my y can take uh, some 100 other values for each combination of x and y this particular joint pmf should be equal to product of marginals so that is what that says so i pick any x1 any small x1 from the range of x any small x2 from the range of y and if i look at the joint pmf of that x x1 x2 and if i look at the product of marginals f of x1 and times f of y x2 these two should be equal for all okay for any so it's like even if it what it says is even if it fails for at one of the case so just like in one of the case my joint is not equal to product of marginal even it fails for one case one particular x1 and x2 i cannot say that x and y are independent to each other so if i am saying that they are independent to each other then this joint will be equal to product of marginal for all x1 and x2 in the respect to ranges okay so for all is that much important so if you don't see that for all then you would have answered you will just we will just get for one particular case uh, my joint is equal to the marginals so you might think that both are independent to each other but that's not the case so as as it is failing here this is what we conclude as f of x y of 1 comma 3 is not equals to f of x 1 f of y f y of 3 this implies x and y are not independent not independent and one more cheat cheat code kind of thing you can see that if in your joint pmf table if one of your entries is zero okay if one of your entries is zero then definitely x and y will not be independent at all okay so this is for sure and coming to uh, someone who asks if marginal becomes zero so when will your marginal will become zero so that is the second statement okay if you see this is like a cheat 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 code kind of thing so if you see any entry to be zero then without computations at all you can conclude that both are independent to both are not independent at all 
so if i can i have sir, joint sir, dmf i table? just had one doubt on this line hmm. so you said that if one of the entry is zero then we can conclude that the overall uh, uh, relation is not independent how about hmm. if there is a complete one row zero so in that yes, case I'm, the... i'm 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 coming to that only so oh, okay okay sorry so that will not be it will it won't be part of the range that yeah, yeah, that yeah. i will i will let me let me do this so most of see this is a common doubt and i appreciate this doubt so this should come so so why we are concluding that if there is zero then definitely it is not independent sometimes there might be a case that there might be a case that i i can have zero here and zero here and zero times zero will be zero how can we conclude so if it is zero and zero here so then definitely the other entries will also get fixed right this this should also be zero this should also be zero then only this sum can be equal to zero and if this is zero then again this should be zero and this should be zero so if you see now the chance that the random variable x taking value 1 so what is the probability that x takes value 1 in this particular case zero let's forget about these entries these entries will be like some entries okay so some other entries which will sum up to uh, one okay so now when can your marginal take zero so if that row or column entry complete row or column entry is zero so then only your marginal can take zero sir even when one of them is zero not like both of them should be zero okay 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 one one zero okay let, let us consider only one zero wow oh, uh, 1 by 16 1 by 16 2 by 16 that's four okay let's consider one zero only so now you see this will sum up to 3 by Eight. Okay, but that doesn't matter. Now concentrate on this this particular marginal. This is zero, and what will be this? One by four plus one by eight plus one by sixteen. So it will be two, four, six, seven, seven, seven by sixteen. Seven by sixteen. So this will be seven by sixteen. The other one will be nine by sixteen. Correct. so now if you see the marginal so the marginal distribution says that x takes value 1 with probability 0 x takes value 2 with probability 7 by 16 x takes value 3 with probability 9 by 16 so how do i write the pmf of this x now what will be the pmf of x i will give you two options will it be like this will it be this or option b option b sir b because second option sir ha huh. second option second option because see the range or the random variable x take taking values means there is some probability of taking that particular value yes or no so if the random variable x taking some value is zero that particular uh, number will not come into the range at all and that yes. will not appear in the joint pmf at all so your first column will not be there at all okay so this this is this is not it a current will not be there means we don't need to consider them correct consider we, the first column at all we will not consider them see if you consider that i will bring like number 4 number 5 number 6 also into the picture and i will increase the table yes sir we can okay. yes. so that is not a good joint pmf table description 
so if your row one row or one column is completely empty we will avoid that row completely and shorten the so we'll just shorten the join table so it will shorten to like this 2 3 1 2 3 with only six entries okay with only six entries so that is a bad way of uh, writing the join pm this this is a this is a better version of this okay understood so that is why we do we will not have if i if we have given you the join pmf with three rows and four columns then definitely that four columns are the four set of are the maybe it is the set of the range of x okay if we have given four columns that means x can take four values and if you have given three rows y can take three values so that is there got it now so you, you that is why if you see any zero entry in your join pmf table definitely your marginals cannot take zero so product of marginals cannot be zero so that cannot be equal to the join that is why you can conclude hmm. so that is about the computation part now my next question maybe this is not even discussed in the lectures also but i just wanted to put this for you to think about this how many entries should i check to conclude that uh i conclude that uh, x and y are independent independent in a two cross two joint table sir one four all entries we need to ah. so conclude that it is they are independent okay it's not that they are not independent not independent you just have to come up with one case if i have to conclude Three. that okay i will give you options also so this is good to think one two three and four sir one all and all four entries so i just want names Names. Who said one? Uh, sir, me, Tarika. Tarika. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, ah, uh, yeah. So, so think about. Think for a minute, maybe, minute or so. Or it's good to uh, understand. Like, it's good to give it a shot. Okay. Just all try. All four, sir. All four. Okay. So Tarika said it is one, and most four, of you were saying four. Monica and four. Radha. Yep. So any other answers? So someone said three. Four. Who said three? three? I said three. Sarad. Okay. Sarad said three. Sanjeev says four. Okay. No one is supporting two. Huh? okay why do we okay see from the statement it says that you it should be true for all okay so have you ever wondered will it be the optimal case so do i have to check all the four or if i check three the fourth one will automatically be done or if i check two itself the other two will be definitely be true so something like this no okay so so think about this 
and i will not be saying the answer now if i have time i will just come back to this and i will solve this okay so meanwhile if it's uniform so if it's uniform distribution then we can check only one two or maybe something no no it's not I mean, uniform i, I never so. said it is uniform or something else i just said okay just just a normal distribution just just x and y take two values each huh. so then only this two cross two table will come i haven't given you the marginals also marginal of x and marginal of y saying that they are uniform or not uniform okay sir so you are making a generalized statement okay, yeah generalized statement how many entries should i actually check to conclude that x and y are independent in two cross two joint table two cross two joint table only we can extend it to n cross n also okay as of now i want you people to think about two cross two okay so time is up okay maybe in between when i am discussing something else and if you are aware of that concepts maybe you can come back and think about this problem okay let me just move forward so that that is about independence for two random variables let's extend it it to n random variables so how the independence will work for multi multiple random variables so this is just for understanding okay once you understand between two random variables it can be generalized to n random variables so independence of uh, multiple random variables okay so what does this state the same definition is valid here also the joint should be so if i have some n random variables okay and the corresponding ranges are something like tx1 txn okay for each of the random variable there is a different range now i say x1 to xn are independent are independent if or i can say if and only if also so if and only if the joint so you know the joint between n random variables right the joint should be equal to product of marginals okay so the same definition so the joint pmf should be equal to product of marginals but the denotation is like this so the joint should be equal to if i have n random variables it will be like this product of n marginal pmf so as i said this also again this again gives me one more statement both are equivalent statement the conditional so if i condition one random variable so something like this x1 to xn minus 1 condition that xn random variable has actually taken xn and x1 x2 to xn minus 1 so the conditional pmf will be equal to the marginal so here the marginal will be okay so by conditioning xn xnth random variable does not actually change the uh, joint distribution between x1 to xn minus 1 so that is what it says okay so you can actually prove this again to write down what we know actually and if they are independent what is the statement given okay so depending uh, compare those two you will get the result you will get this result so i am not going to prove it i request you to try it out if not then we can discuss in the future session 
okay this is about uh, multiple random variables let me take one quick example where three random variables are involved so any aq questions sir activity 2.2 question number 2 and 3 activity 2.2 question 2 okay let's do this let's try to do this Mm, yeah. Hey, yeah, this is not related to what I just discussed. No, x one to x ten are IID geometric, right? Yes. Uh, I didn't. I didn't spoke about IID at all. Then there is no question, I guess, for activity. Okay. First one is only the. Uh, okay. Uh, let me take the example. Okay. Hmm. So if I have given you. Three random variables. Okay, let's take three random variables. This is not AQ two point two. Let us take three random variables: x one, x two, x three. And I have given f of x one, x two, x three, of x one, x two, x three as zero point five, zero point zero five. Okay, and I have given you f of x one of x one some zero point two f of x two given x one is equal to small x one of x two is zero point one. Now what I ask you is to find to find f x three of x two is equal to small x two x three. No, not that. I just need f x three of x three. Okay. So x one, x two, x three are independent random variables. So I'll give you some one or two minutes to solve. So x one, x two, x three are independent random variables. If they are independent random variables, you know the condition. So just put the condition, and I need f x three or small x three. Any quick answers, or are you guys waiting for me to solve? Are people solving? There's no thumbs up. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, The conditional will be equal to marginal. So simultaneously, you should use wherever it is required. You should use both of them. Two point five.
is a blunder. Zero point two five. Yeah. Okay. Few says it is zero point two five. Yeah, I made a blunder. Sorry. The values are, I think, a bit weird, right? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's why the probability is coming more than one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is coming to. Yes, sir. That's why we are not giving answers. Two point five. Okay, okay. Uh, see, this is what happens when we create then and there, na? This will come. We should. We shouldn't create. Okay. If it is zero point five. Then also zero point zero zero five. Zero point two five. Sir, okay, now it will come in zero point two five. Yeah. So the idea is, so how do you write this joint? Is the thing. So I have given this f of x one, x two, x three. So how do I write this joint? When I know that they are independent to each other, f x of x one into f x x one into so f x of x two hmm. into f x of x three is equal to zero point five. So right. if we take x three is equal to x. Then... Hmm. So now I can write it like this, right? So joint I can write it product of marginals. Write it as product of marginals because they are independent to each other. So now uh, I know this, which is zero point zero zero five. And I know this is zero point two. I need to find this. So how do I find this? Because I don't know this now. As of now, I don't know this. But how do I get this from the given information? Since so it is independent, sir, then uh, it will be uh, conditional. Will be conditional marginal. Correct. So since they are independent. So the conditional which you see here will be equal to the marginal only. So even though I condition on x or I didn't condition at all, so I will be getting my f x x two of x two as zero point one only. So this will be equal to f this will be equal to f x two of x two. So the conditional PMF will be equal to the marginal. So this also I know. Sir, conditional will be equal to marginal for all the uh, cases. If you take mm -hmm. this one, okay. mm -hmm. okay. see here when I say x one, x two, x three are independent, they are independent to each other. So x one is independent, x two is independent, x three is independent. Okay, sir. Yeah. From x one and x two. Okay. So all uh, I have all the information I need. So simply I, this is just the computation part. So x three will be zero point zero zero five by zero point two into zero point one. So this will somewhere be zero point two five if I simplify. So that is that is how you should solve the problems when a question is given from independence of multiple random variables. So if we have given multiple number of random variables and one size, once we said that they are independent. So you see, once we said they are independent, it becomes very easy now. Once we say independent, there are two 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 things that should definitely run in your mind. One is the joint is equals to product of marginals. And the other one is the conditional will be equal to the marginal. Okay, these two things should run directly once you see when we say they are independent, random. Okay, so that is about independent independence of random variables. The next thing I want to talk about is the most important. Maybe you can keep like. Sir, I have doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, while solving AQ two point one question number three, mm -hmm. you know we use the option formula. Option number three or question number three? Question number three. AQ two point one question number three. Uh, okay, okay. Let me just so go back to two point one. Yeah. So while while solving that problem, mm. uh, we wrote that. Uh,
uh, fx given y is equal to t2 uh, t1 is equal to 0 0.02 and fy t2 is 0 0.6 Hmm. Then, then we wrote f x y t one t two is f x t one multiplied by f y t two, and then uh, we equated f y t two f x given y is equal to t two t one is equal to f x t one into f f y t two. So same logic if I, if we apply in the question given your 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 question. So mm. when f x one f x f x one f x two f x three x one x two x three is equal to zero point zero zero five is equal to f x one f x one into f x two x two. So yeah, we we can write know that f x one x one into f x two x two is equal to f x two given x one is equal to x one x two. We cannot write like that. Means, uh, so you are uh, dividing it into. Uh, the conditionals is that what yes. you are doing? Yes. Yes. Ah. So once you divide, so once you write this in terms of conditional, so how will you write f x one of x one into f x two given x one is equals to x one of x two into f x three given x one is equals to some x one x two is equals to some x two of x three, right? Yes. This is how you write. So I have given this. I have given this. But I don't want this. Instead, I wanted the marginal, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but if you see correctly, as they are independent, this is again the conditional uh, PMF. I can equate it to the marginal directly, right? And it will equal to f of uh, x three. F of x three only. Okay, sir. So again, you will get the same. See, f of x one is f of f x one of x one. Again, this this conditional, I can write it as. Uh, oh, okay. Anyway, I have given you the conditional point one. So you can directly substitute point one. Also, if it is not that, as they are independent to each other, this will shorten to f x two of x two. That is how you will prove, right? If you wanted to prove how how. If conditional is equals to marginal, from then from there you can get this directly, right? So conditionals will shorten to marginals only, and that will become the product of marginals. Okay, whatever method you follow, uh, you should be sure that the values are correct, and you are applying the right concept. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So yeah, so I just wanted to talk about the next topic, which is most important topic, and this topic you will see till week twelve. So that is called independent, identically distributed random variables. So. So this independent, identically distributed. In short, it is called as simply with three letters I I D. And I am pretty much sure in future, whatever the question you are going to get, there will be somewhere I I D, and you will miss that I I D. Reading that I I D. So what this I I D and the history of I I D and all things, I will just try to explain. So this independent, identically distributed. See this I term I I D comes into the picture uh, when we are talking about random variables. Okay, so when I am talking about some n random variables, or let me just go from two random variables and I will extend this to n random variables case. So I say x one and x two. So this. So x one and x two are IIDs. So IIDs is not simply three letters. IIDs means independent and identically distributed. So I say x one and x two are IIDs if okay if it it should satisfy two conditions now. So the first one is x one and x two. Are independent. 
okay so again i said when i said x1 and x2 are independent two things should automatically should come into your mind so the first thing is fx1 of x2 of small x1 x2 is equals to fx1 of x1 x2 for all again see how we are going to the roots for all x1 belongs to tx x2 belongs to tx2 so this this thing and again the conditional thing also should run in your mind when i say x1 and x2 are independent so this see that is what see this might look like a small statement but the but if you want to understand correctly you just have to remember all these things again and the next thing is so this is one condition only so x1 and i can't uh, conclude that x1 and x2 are iids if x1 and x2 are independent alone there is one more condition which says so the first condition is independent thing so the next condition will come with identically distributed so identically distributed means the random variables x1 and x2 should have the same pmf identical pmf so distribution is equivalent to pmf okay in this case one by two and one by two in this case one by two and one by two sir no 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 not one by two and one by two i didn't discuss about range of x1 and range of x2 at all okay what i meant is when i look at the marginals okay when i look at the marginal pmf of x1 and x2 they should be so fx size the marginal pmfs are identical again so this might look like a single simple statement when i say identical what does the, that mean so what so what uniformly means? distributed no that's not the thing marginal values are same ha huh. so when i say identical so identical means the range of x1 and x2 are equal equal and f of x1 of x1 so when they are equal we will have f of x1 of x1 should be equal to f of x2 of x1 so this this x1 t of x1 or t of x2 so i can say t of x1 so when i say the range of x1 and x2 are equal that imply that that means t of x1 is equals to t of x2 okay the range should be equal and the corresponding probabilities should also be equal so that is what called as identically distributed so this is the distribution and if the distribution is identical then we say it is identically distributed so i will call x1 and x2 as iids if they are independent and identically distributed so i will take an example sir, of this sir uh, mm. you have put f for fx1 of x1 is equal to fx2 of x1 ha uh ha -huh. x1 uh, can is be right x2 also there x2 also there but small x1 is equal to small x2 ha uh, so we can even we can even say that fx1 of x1 is equal to fx2 of x2 hmm x2 condition that x1 is equals to x2 so the small x1 will be equal to x2 Okay, so I will take an example now. So for the earlier question you asked, I said three iteration. I think it will work only if it is IADs, right? Then no, 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 no. I didn't bring IAD. I no, I didn't said right. Okay, yeah, I'm saying. Uh huh. Nothing. So that is generalized statement. Okay. Okay. Sir. So now, 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 I will give you two instances, two different uh, cases. Tell me which one is IAD and uh, which one is not an IAD. so oh, this is this is case 
I will give it as a join PMF table only. Okay, I don't want to give it as a join PMF table. So I will give the distribution of x1 here and x2. Okay, x1 takes values 1. Uh, how do I? Uh, so this is tx1 and probability that x1 is equals to x1. Okay, range x1. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So this is x1 and its corresponding probabilities and x2 and its corresponding probabilities. Okay. X1 takes, let, let me say that 1, 2, 3, 4 with probabilities half 1 by 4, 1 by 8 and 1 by 8. X2 takes values 4, 5, 6, 7 with probabilities 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 4 and half. So this is one scenario. And the other one is Okay, I just need only whether they are identically distributed or not. Okay, so let I am just assuming that they are independent. So x one takes uh, x two probability that x two is equals to x two. Okay, now it takes zero. 0, 1, 2, 3 with probabilities 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, sorry, not 1 by 8 again. Okay, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, and 1 by 2, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 2. So I will just give uh, case 3 also. So these are the three cases I have uh, given. I want which one of which case actually says that x1 and x2 are identically distributed. Case 2. Case 2. Okay. Okay. Case 2. Okay. So case 2 is evident. Why not case 1 and case 2? So where case 1 and case 2 are failing? Okay. Uh, by looking at... Uh, case 2 you can directly see that the range of x1 and x2 are uh, equal like 0 1 2 3 and the corresponding probabilities like when probability that x1 is equal to 0 is 1 by 4 and x2 is equal to 0 is 1 by 4 so so it looks like identical distribution why not case 1 why not case 3 case 1 uh, the range of values are different and along with their marginal probabilities Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Purnendu, case. just take a break. Let me hear from uh, others. Okay, sir. okay, yeah. Case three, uh, we are able to see that f of x one and the values are different. So mm. probability distribution Correct. is not same. Yeah. It's different. Not same. Correct. So, so case one, you can see directly the ranges are different. Okay, x one takes one, two, three, four, and so as the ranges are different, uh, 
x1 and x2 are not identical okay so in order to be identical first of all the set of values that x1 takes should be equal to the set of values that x2 takes okay so case 1 is failed in that particular condition and case 3 why it failed is see here the ranges are same the range of x1 the set of values x1 can take is 1 2 3 4 and the set of values x2 can take is also 1 2 3 4 okay but the difference is they are not distributed identically the ranges are uh, same but the distribution is different how it is different is when i look at the probability that x1 is equals to 1 it is half but when i look at the probability that x2 takes value 1 is 1 by 8 which is not equal to half so it's not that the ranges should be same within the range also whatever the value that x1 takes with some probability the random variable x2 should also take that particular value with the same probability so here instead of this had it been like this half 1 by 4 1 by 8 and 1 by 8 now you see not only the ranges are same but also the corresponding probabilities of the values are same the probability that x1 takes 1 is equal to probability that x1 takes x2 takes 1 is equal to half so similarly if you pick any uh, value from the range so any uh, small x1 if you take the probability that capital x1 takes that particular value is same for x1 and x2 that is what identically distributed mean any doubts am i audible yes sir yes sir okay. yes sir hmm. okay so this is the second case okay second condition for iid so it should be identically distributed the first condition is firstly they should be independent then only i can uh, say that uh, they are iids one simple real life example will be tossing a coin two times okay and observing the heads simple simple understanding of iids so toss a coin two times okay and define random variables define x1 as 0 if first toss is tail and 1 if first toss toss a fair coin let's say fair coin if the first toss is head okay and this is one random variable and similarly i can define another random variable x2 0 and 1 if second toss is tail, if second toss is head. So, R, X and Y, my question is, R, X1 and X2, IID is, Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir, because the range is same and uniformly distributed. Probability is also uniformly distributed. Hmm. Correct. So you see, first first condition you should check is uh, whether they are independent to each other or not. So the outcome of first toss is independent to the outcome of the second toss, right? So whatever the values x1 takes will not 
affect x2 values yes. at x2 takes. so they are independent this is correct and i have to look at the distributions of x1 and x2 so if i look at the distribution of x1 and x2 so probability that x1 takes small x1 so x1 takes 0 or 1 with probability is half and half similarly if i see x2 probability that x2 takes small x2 again these the outcomes are maybe 0 or 1 and with probability is half and half so if you see here the range of x1 and range of x2 is same and the corresponding probabilities are also same so this implies they are identically distributed sir but what if x2 has 1 and 0 will then also be it, it will be independent right because range are same uh -huh, uh -huh. here see in this particular case they will be independent identical okay. okay okay yeah so if it is something like unfair coin so even though if it is unfair coin usually my i won't see like my i won't be telling that uh, for my first toss my success is had and for the second toss my success will be tail right so if you are looking at yes. an experiment and if you are saying you are looking for heads so if you toss the coin 10 times also all the 10 times you will your success will be head and failure will be tail right yes okay. now uh, this is iid between two random variables and this can be extended to multiple random variables and this is how it is defined so i say x1 x2 like this i have n random variables okay and these n random variables are said to be iids if the first condition is again if x1 to xn are independent to each other okay and the second condition is the marginal pmfs so the marginal pmf so whatever i have written is like these are the pmfs right so the marginal pmfs should be identical should be identical again identical means they should have the same range and same corresponding probabilities so identical distribution it should have the identical distribution. identical means it's like more or less equal distribution okay so let me do one problem so usually when we talk about iids it will be like it will be with multiple random variables only okay so so whatever the examples you see uh, in regards to IIDs, you will see it like there are some 10 random variables, 20 n random variables because of the independence condition we have. So you can break down the joint into product of marginals directly. And also, so that's the sir, interesting thing you will see now. Huh? Sir, sir, early when you taken that ex example of uh, throwing the, tossing the coin two times, hmm. You said it's a fair coin, but even yeah. if it's an unfair coin, yeah, yeah, even if it is an unfair coin, also they will be identically right. distributed, right? Yeah, so just I should write the probabilities as half and half. I just mentioned it fair, okay. okay sir. So, so good thing is this will how, look at how this will cut down. Uh, so if I say x1 to xn our iids if i look at the joint now how can i write this joint i can write this joint as product of, product of marginals
and this is using only one condition first condition if i use the second condition you see whatever i have written in the right hand side all these are identical to each other so if i say they are identically distributed this fx1 of x1 is same as fx2 of x2 is same as fx1 of xn right all these are identically distributed right if you understand one marginal so if you understand one marginal distribution you can actually compute the joint so out of n random variables or maybe if 100 if there are 100 random variables okay and i simply said they are iids so you don't need to understand uh, the joint between the 100 random variables that co collectively so looking at the joint collectively it will be like like killer so if you can able to understand only one random variable and that will apply to all 100 random variables and you can collectively come with the joint between the 100 random variables and that's the great thing about this iid so so even though you understand very little you can expand that to like larger topics larger uh, space okay so let me take few examples about this maybe i will take the uh, activity sir, yeah. sir one thing a uh, sir uh, identically distributed doesn't mean that it should be uniformly right it should be uniformly right because sir uh, when i said uniformly distributed that time you said no no That's right the, so that is what see these are identically distributed right yes but they are not uniform right okay so they, not necessary they should be uniform no, distributed no 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 necessary not necessary that they they are uniform to each other because in questions we have done maximum of the questions which are of dice or coins they all are uniformly distributed so that's why i ask okay mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily uniformly distributed it should be uh, like identical no. just identical okay maybe maybe i will say there is a coin okay there is a coin uh, with it is an unbiased coin with probability of occurrence of head is 0.6 and i am tossing the coin two times and i am looking for heads okay even this case also x1 and x2 are iids mm -hmm, so for the x2 yes. it will be going in reverse no hmm? for x for x2 sir zero is for the tail get in tail and uh, for x1 it will be uh, probability of 0 is 0.6 and probability of sorry 0.4 and probability of 1 is 0.6 mm -hmm. both are same both are same both are same right yeah. both will be same yeah, so that is what it is it is not necessary that maybe uh, should i write that somewhere no sir uh, you said for unfair coin 0.6 is the probability of getting a head mm -hmm. if suppose x1 is equal to 0.6 if the first toss is head and uh, 0.4 if the first toss is uh, tail correct mm -hmm. and x2 in x2 uh, we can't uh, we can't have the other way around no? see see your experiment is running with success or failure right it's not head or tail okay. correct so which one is your success will it be head ha, will head be your success or tail be so your if, success so if if head is a success then it should be uh, it should be the success for the all the experiments all the experiment the right yeah, yeah. Okay, okay okay fine so That's here fine. zero and one we define based on the success and failure failure yes 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 okay. yeah understood yes okay so okay uh, just to cred uh, to emphasize that statement so identical does not imply that uh, they are uniform okay so identical distribution does not imply that they should be from uniform distribution it may be or may not okay ah uh, maybe or may not but it will not imply you can't directly okay. conclude that it is uniform 
okay okay yeah so i will just take an example from aq uh aq 2.2 is that is that correct Ubnan? yes 2.2 uh, question number 2 So question number two says that, so as I said, right, when it comes to IIDs, we will not be in two random variables, we will move to multiple random variables. They said x1 to x10 are IID identically distributed according to geometric 1 by 5. So this means, so now you see. We said uh, x1 to xn are following IID. So this means according to geometric 1 by 5. Okay. This means okay. independent, identically distributed, distributed according to, according to geometric 1 by, one by 5. five. So that means, so what this means is x1 to x10 are independent and x1 follows, okay, maybe x size follow geometric 1 by 5 for all, uh, for i is equals to 1 to 10. So this is understandable, right? Yes, so what sir. this means is x1 follow geometric 1 by 5, x2 follow geometric 1 by 5, like this x10 will also follow geometric 1 by 5. 1 by 5. So all the 10 random variables will have distribution same as geometric 1 by 5 and also mm -hmm. x1 to x10 are independent to each other. Okay. Okay, this is what that question says. This is AQ 2.2 question 2. And what we need to find is, we have to find the probability that, so probability that x1 greater than 10, x2 greater than 10, and so on, x10 greater than 10. Okay? Yes. So now, this is joint. Right? Yes. So we can separate out this p of x1 greater than 10 into p of x2 greater than 10. Right. So, as this is joint, I can write this as product of marginals. Yes. So, I can write this as x1 greater than 10, probability that x2 greater than 10, and so on. As probability they are that, independent. Uh, as they IID. are independent. So, so, as we said IIDs, so they are independent. Yeah. So I can write this. No, now you, you said as they are joined. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. So as they are independent, the joint can be written as a product of margins. Okay. So now okay. you see the probability that x1 greater than 10 and the probability that x2 greater than 10. As x1 and x2 are identically distributed, these two probabilities are same. Yes. yes will be same right and these will yes. be same for all the random variables, all other random variables right what i mean is the second second uh, note or uh, conclusion what i can make is as they are identically distributed probability that x1 greater than 10 is equal to probability that x2 greater than 10 is equal to like this it will be equal to till x10 greater than 10 right Instead of writing x2, x, uh, x3, x10, I can simply replace everything with probability that x1 greater than 10. Can I? Yes, sir. So I just wanted to, what, what I wanted to do is, I wanted to replace with this with uh, probability that x1 greater than 10. And the next one with probability that x1 greater than 10. And the last one with also probability that x1 greater than 10. Can I do this? Yes, sir. We can do yes, that. sir. Yes, because all are equal. So once I do that, I'm just writing it down so from here to the next here. 
what will i get is probability that x1 greater than 10 times probability that x1 greater than 10 times and so on probability that x1 greater than time 10 how many times 10, 10, 10 times 10 10 times and if i simplify it what will i get probability that x1 it would be raised to 10 yeah. raised to 10 raised to 10 right uh, now what is the distribution of x1 geometric geometric, geometric. 1 by 5 1 by oh, 5 sorry, sorry. 1 by 5 correct so what what do we mean by probability that x1 greater than 10 so it would be summation 11 to infinity summation 11 to infinite so infinite. that means probability yeah. that uh, x1 is equals to 11 plus probability that x1 is equals to 12 and so on to the power 10 is this okay is this correct sir but yes, sir. but x1 x2 and all are up to means uh, means we can have infinite values okay i understand right yeah <laughs> so now once this is correct so you know it is geometric 1 by 5 what is the probability that x1 is equals to 11 10 failures 10 failures and, and the 11th one is a success mm -hmm. so 1 by 5 into 4 by 5 to the power 10 yeah. so 10 failures is 4 by 5 to the power 10 followed by one success mm -hmm. plus what is 12 when when will my random variable x1 takes 12 what is the probability 11, the, failures, 11 failures and one success yeah 1 by 5 Plus, see if you know the formula, you can directly put the formula. So I am not denying sir, that. Sir, how we calculated this four by five? So this is a failure, right? This one by five is success probability of success. Yes. For this, you need to understand what geometric distributions. Okay. So geometric distribution. What does th that actually mean? that you have to brush up by this. So this will be power 10. And now how do I simplify this? I can take 4 by 5 to the power 10 and 1 by 5 common. And I will be remind with 1 plus 4 by 5 plus 4 by 5 whole square. So the next term will be 4 by 5 whole to the power 12 yes. times 1 by 5. So all this will be remind. So everything power 10. Mm -hmm. So this is like geometric, geometric, and this will be equal to people who know geometric distribution. It is simply one, one by four by, minus five. Yeah. People who don't know also, it is very easy to prove. So this is what I request my everyone: account. take that as some s. Four by five, four by five whole square, and so on. So even though you multiply four by five to your s, it will become See this 4 by 1 multiplied by 4 by 5, it becomes 4 by 5. 4 by 5 multiplied by 4 by 5, it becomes 4 by 5 whole square and so on. Okay, just multiply 4 by 5 on both sides and subtract it. So these are these are few things you can, uh, you have to build actually. So, so these one, are from math concepts, right? A math concept. Just shifting. Yeah. Yeah, you are just shifting it. Shifting. If you multiply four by five, it will just shift. One 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 term will shift to the right side. So if I subtract it, all this will get cancelled out. And you will be remind by one. So from there you will get one by one minus four by five, which I have write, written it directly. Sir, how it got cancelled, sir? Hmm? So how you just subtract, subtract. Subtract the above expression with the below expression so there is 4 by 5 and denominator also you will have 4 uh, sorry in the next expression also you will have 4 by 5 all this will get cancelled out ok try it out try it out it will be interesting to do ok so using this itself Ramanjan has proved sum of natural numbers will be equal to minus 1 ok if you know who is Ramanujan Yes, sir. No. Yeah. Then uh, the famous mathematician itself he proved that sum of all the natural numbers is not minus one, minus one by twelve actually. It's minus one by twelve. Yeah. Yeah. By twelve, sir. Yeah. 
Bose has proved it. And that is how the series works. So he has done a simple uh, mistake in that. So that is why it is wrong. But yeah, see uh, that everything is like, see, even though you forget formula. So I'm explaining in a way that even though you forget the formula of these things, even there is a direct formula for this. Actually, if it is following geometry, probability that uh, X one greater than some M is actually one minus one minus P, P power M. minus one or something. Yeah. So even though you forget that, if you know this basic basic things, some logical uh, thinking if you have, you can come up to the solution. So this will be like five by four. Five five right? This is five. This if you simplify five. this, this will be five. Hmm. And this this will cancel out with this. And you will be remained with four by five whole power hundred. 100. Whole power 10. So this will be 4 by 5 whole power, power 100. 100. So that is all. Hmm. Okay. This should come. To. Okay. So if you, from the options, it says that uh, it is 0 0.8 to the power 100. 100, yes. Okay. So it's not about uh, getting the answer directly. It's about the computation, what we did. What all concepts we involved in this. See, once they said only, only they said three letters. Okay. They only hmm. said IID. That's it. And then they asked us to compute this joint. And computing joint for 10 random variables is slightly difficult. It's not that easy if you don't have that IID. Mm -hmm. But once you have that IID with you, you can break down and you can simplify it. This is how you can simplify mm -hmm. and you can get the answer. Sir, will, uh, will we always know that it's an IID means it will be provided? or we have to check at some point no see it, it won't be provided it should be given okay we will provide you key they, they are identically distributed okay. we already know that uh, in have... in stats too at least okay. in stats too we will provide you with uh, the statement they are following IIDs. okay sir if we sir if we use the direct formula uh, hmm. 1 minus p raised to k minus 1 multiplied by p. So that is geometric. 1 minus p to the power? K, k, uh, to the power k minus 1 multiplied by p. Uh -huh. Is this correct? For the geometry, yes. he's saying. For, for, for the geometry, yes. geometry for infinity, yes. 1 upon uh, 1 minus. So, so you are talking about this thing, right? Probability that x greater than some n. Yes, when x yes. follows geometric p yes yes cds when you need to use the cds so this will be 1 minus p whole to the power n right there will not be any p right am i correct yes yes x yeah see this is what it will uh, throw you in it will throw you into the confusions if you if we just blindly follow on the formulas but this is correct so i can uh, compare it with the previous one here, what are the computations I did? So it will turn out to be p times 1, mi 1 by p into 1 minus p whole power uh, n. So that p and 1, 1 by p will get cancelled out. And yeah, we will uh, eventually get the same. Uh -huh. this, 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 this is correct. Hmm. So even though if you use this, here n is 10 and p is uh, 1 by 5. So you get it like yeah, 4. So then we'll get uh, to the power. Uh, 10 no why how 100 because i didn't know the derivation earlier i used the formula only while okay. solving the equation. see this is only for one random variable right we have uh see that is what 10. there will be 10 times so this is 1 minus p whole power 10 and again there is one more uh, term 1 minus p whole power 10 so like this you will have 10 1 minus p whole power 10s yeah okay okay right. i got it okay. right yeah Okay, okay, okay. Let's do I have to do one more example of this or shall we move on to Sir question number three from that same exercise? I understand that it requires the memoryless property of geometric distribution due to IIDs, but I'm not getting means how that value satisfies whatever we are getting. Okay, 
ओके ओके गुड गुड दैट आई आई फॉरगेट दिस थिंग सी दिस इज अ स्मॉल कॉन्सेप्ट व्हिच इज यूज्ड फॉर कंप्यूटेशनल पर्पसेस सो इफ यू नो दिस योर कंप्यूटेशन पार्ट विल बी स्लाइटली इजियर फॉर यू सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज मेमोरीलेस प्रॉपर्टी ओके सो मेमोरीलेस प्रॉपर्टी एक्चुअली फ्रॉम द नेम इटसेल्फ यू कैन थिंक सो व्हाट एवर मेमोरी यू बिल्ड प्रीवियसली it will forget so what this uh, states is when x is following geometric uh, some p okay the probability that my x takes value uh, okay uh, my x is greater than some 300 given that x is greater than 150 So what does this mean? Is actually geometric distribution means the first success. Yes. So when will we get the first success? So what this states is this particular conditional distribution states is it is known that for the first one fifty uh, trials I didn't get the success. What is the probability that I will get the success after three hundred three hundred trial? That is that is what it, this means, and this will turn out that. whatever the condition or whatever uh, trials you have made till then so we have done 150 trials and we didn't observe any success at all okay and yeah. the 151 trial is a fast first first trial so it's like whatever the outcomes you have observed previously the 150 outcomes will not affect or will not be will not give much information about the 151th Uh, okay, one fifty one. Now let me take one fifty. So we'll not uh, give more information about the one fifty one the trial. So it will again be like a fresh start. Start. Okay? okay. It's like again, it's it's more or less equal to probability that from there it will start new, and it is the first trial. So what is the probability that from here on uh, I will get the success? after the first trial so it's like if i represent it on number line it will be slightly so you see i said 150 so this is the first trial uh this is the second and like this 150th trial i have made so i have done so i am here right now okay hmm so what is the pro i have observed this so this is given to us this is done okay this is the condition i have for the first 150 trials i didn't see any success and i wanted to see when what will be uh, what is the probability that my success comes after 151th trial so after 151th trial is like 150 second or 153rd like this So what this particular memoryless property states that is, so even though you do 150, from here onwards, from 151th onwards, it's like first trial, first again. So it's like now if I am here, again this will be like an zero. So even though you did 150, it's waste. It's like it forgets, no memory is saved of 150. Again it will start like fresh. Zero at first, second, third, fourth, and like this. Okay. Okay. Basically, so now, something like the memory is reset, is it? Ah, uh, memory is reset. Yeah. So it is also called as fresh start, right? Fresh start. Yeah. Yes. So not only geometry. If you uh, in the next continuous, when when we study continuous random variables, exponential also memoryless. Exponential distribution will also be memoryless property. Will also follow this memoryless property. Okay, so we will read that maybe in not the lectures. Maybe if I take the session in that particular weeks, I will just revisit that and I will just show you how exponential also becoming memoryless. And uh, this also can be proven. I'll just take two more minutes. So if I want, what I said is, I know. I want something like this x greater than some n plus m, 
given that x is greater than m okay so just just wanted to compare here so m is this so n plus m means uh, this is like 1 plus 150 i am writing it as 1 plus 150 so n will be 1 and i said uh, that will be equal to probability that x greater than m okay so why i missed so this will be equal to probability that x greater than m so let me put this in uh, probabilities conditional probability i can write it as join divided by marginal so everything can be proven okay so x greater than m divided by probability that x greater than m okay so what is this joint represents x is greater than n plus m and x is greater than n so what is this what what this will tell me so when will x be greater than n plus m and x greater than m product of uh, and and this is end so it's like logic now again logic comes into the picture when can x be greater than n plus m and x greater than m so what does it mean so x greater than n plus m uh, so what what does this mean x greater than 30 and x greater than 10 x greater than 30 it's like intersection ah uh, it's like inter intersection right so it's like probability that x greater than n plus m divided by probability that x greater than m so once it is geometric uh, just now we discussed the formula right what will this be the numerator be 1 minus p whole power n plus m n plus n plus m and the denominator will be 1 minus p whole power m m so this will be 1 minus p whole power n plus m, m minus m this will m. be 1 minus p whole power n hmm. and which is x is greater than m okay hmm. so that is what uh, this numeryless property state but this has some some applications but not widely used so that is what that is about uh, memoryless and in that question three is related to that uh, memoryless property only. Mm. That six of your work. Huh? Huh. So a random experiment consists of rolling a fair die until six appears. Let X denote the number of times the die is rolled. Okay. Suppose six does not appear until the sixth throw. Mm. Find the probability that six will appear after the eighth throw. Right. What, what we know is x is greater than 6 and what we are, so this is given, so this is condition now, hmm. this is given and we require, what is the probability that we will get 6 after the 8th throw, hmm. right. so that means this, this can be written as probability that x greater than 2 plus 6 given x greater than 6, hmm. so this is somewhat equal to probability that x greater than 2. So if you simplify this, you will get the answer. Sir, I have a question here. Hello? Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, it says until the sixth row. So really x is greater than five, isn't it? Rather than six. Until, right? Six six is done, right? The sixth head happened, six head up here. So, so is the success on the sixth throw or is it after the sixth throw? Success didn't appear until sixth throw. That is given to us. That means I have done six throws and nowhere I have seen six. So uh, so it's basically after the seventh throw then. I mean, sorry, after the sixth. So seventh throw was when the success appeared. Is that correct? No, no, no. We, we are not worried about seventh throw is a success. What we worried about is we want to find the probability that the success will appear after the 8th throw. Okay. So, so, so when we say x is equal to 7, that says that the, my success has happened on the 7th throw. Right, okay. Because right. I, I misunderstood the question. Because uh -huh. it said, suppose 6 does not appear until the 6th throw. I assume that meant it appeared on the 6th throw. 
Uh, no, 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 no. So, so we hadn't observed any success till the sixth row. That's it. We are at sixth row now. Sixth rows are done, and we are about to throw the tie for the seventh tie. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So seventh throw will come will be considered as the first to throw. That is why we are putting here right. probability x greater than right? two. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So five by six is just the probability that it didn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sir, IID implies uh, memory less property, right? IID implies memory less property. Uh, no, right? IID and memory less are two different things. And memory less property is only associated to geometric distribution. Okay. It will not be followed by some other binomial or uh, Bernoulli or some 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 other distributions. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, so that that's about uh, uh, the first two lectures. And see, as I said, from week two, the key takeaway is this IID is okay. And we have a few more lectures. Few lectures are of intuitional purposes. Like it's like just we how how you visualize functions of one one to one functions, many to one functions. So there are some uh, videos, and also. Uh, some videos we have function of two different random variables uh, two random variables and in among that the main uh, confusing functions will be one function is max function so max of x1 x2 and another function is minimum of x1 x2 um yeah some so two some 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 some, some, some is okay but yeah, yeah it's good to know some some function also some is basically x1 plus x2 okay so uh, i just wanted to take some is there any session another session going on started at 8 or something like that yes sir we will have max class now max 2 huh? yes sir okay Okay, maybe uh, I'll just uh, at eight thirty. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, just let me take some five five more minutes, five to ten more minutes. Uh, I'm not taking much time, and I don't want to. Uh, okay, maybe professor also explain this in how to look this functions in uh, joint PMF table. So the contour contour means like how you can uh, visually see the max and min functions in the joint pmf table okay i will just take uh, a couple of minutes uh, with an example basically and i will try to give you some idea of how to go about this max min and uh, some functions okay yes so, especially sir huh. minimum because for so, maximum there are many videos but for minimum it's there are okay. few yeah okay, let me take x1 let me take the joint uh, table only, okay? Wow. So pull that. Okay, five is sufficient. So this is x1, this is x2. Uh, let us say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And x2 takes something like 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Okay. And there are some entries. Okay. Now, now there will be some probabilities. So I'm not writing the probabilities now. Instead, I will write the sum or whatever. For, let, let me see the sum. So I'm in, interested in uh, x1 plus x2. Okay. And each entry is the sum. Okay. Now it's not probability. This is not joint PMF. Each entry. Each entry will be the sum. 
and if i write down the sum uh, you will see the interesting thing so what will be the sum of 1 plus 1 2 1 one 1 so that is what my entry i am going to write the entry as 2 no so it's not probability again so i'm just my entries are the just the sum of x1 and x2 Ranges. And this one, three, three, four, four, five, uh, six, five, six. Uh, now two plus one is three, three, three. four, five, six, three. four, five, 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 six, seven, eight, seven. This one, four, five, six, four, seven, four five, six, seven, eight. Like this, it will go five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Okay. Now you see there is an interesting thing that you can come up with. See, when will the sum be equal to two? How many cases you can see there? One, sir. One, one. Only one case. And when will the sum be equal to three? Two cases. Two cases. Two cases. And you see three here and three here. Okay. So like this, two is here, and three here and here. And how many cases are there for sum being four? Three. 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 Three and, cases. Yeah, and that is. This resembling a contour. Contour, right? Contour. Yeah. So it's like parallel lines, straight lines. Yeah. You can see. So you see when the sum become five, it's like in these particular cases, and six, seven. So if I see diagonally, each line represents a sum. So this is x one plus x two being six, correct? And this is x one plus x two being ten. So like this. So you see, I can generalize this. So the probability or Maybe x one plus x two being some six. I have uh, how many cases? I have x one plus x two being six. There are five cases, and if I write down the cases, x one can be one and x two can be five. X one can be two. X two can be four. So like this, x one can be Some k and x two can be six minus k. Six minus six minus k. So if I say k, it should be six minus k. So similarly, I can write down all the things x two. If f x one is three, x two is three, x one is four, x two is two, and I have one more case. X one is five and x two is one. So instead of writing all this five, can I write x one takes k and x two takes six minus k for k is equals to one, two, three, four, five? Yes. So are these two identical? These two. This writing all the five and just writing x one is equals to k and x two is six minus k. And k can be from one, two, three, four, and corresponding x two will be like six minus one, six minus two, six minus three, and six minus two. Can I? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if I wanted to compute the probability that x one plus x two is equals to six, what can I write this directly? Summation. K is equals to one to five. Probability that x one is k and x two is six minus k. Yes. See, yes, I sir, have uh, I have missed two lines in between. Okay, like I just skipped two lines in between and directly written this particular uh, expression. But you should be able to connect these two. So how do I write this? in between there will be one two steps so you can actually write two steps okay so try writing it down if you didn't understand maybe 
the first step is write down the cases okay write down the cases when can x1 plus x2 be 6 and you should add all the cases possible so this is a probability right and they are mutually exclusive events so you should add them add their probabilities and once you add the probabilities you can be you can come up with some variable k so that you can shorten it down like you can just write it in one expression so i request everyone to try it out so like this you can compute the probabilities when it is for a sum of two random variables and from the diagram if you see if you have the joint bmf table with you this is how it is so the contours are like diagonals okay so similarly i just wanted to emphasize for min maybe i'll start with min so what do we mean by min of x1 and x2 Minimum of two. So this is a function. Okay. So this min of x1, x2 is a function. It takes values either x1 or x2 depending upon whichever is minimum. So this will take x1. If x1 is less than x2, it will take x2. If x1 is greater than x2. So if both are equal, then it takes either of it. If both are equal, any one you can take. So it will be like x1 or x2 if x1 is equal to x2. So this is what min of x1, x2 mean. Whichever is minimum, that value it will take. So let me take the same uh, joint and I will uh, let's let's try can we get any contour or not. Okay, uh, maybe uh, you start uh, writing it down. Again, here I am not writing the probabilities, okay? So I am writing what will be the minimum of x1 and x2 value. So here x1 and x2 are IIDs. Eh? x1 and x2 are IIDs. Are no, they I IIDs? No, I, x2 range is still 6. Yeah. And x1 right. range is still only 5. 5. Right? Ah, it okay. is valid for all the ranges. Hmm. Sir, here we are defining the minimum on two random variables. Mm -hmm. Minimum it's of not two like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like the function of two random variables that we are defining. See, it's a function, right? Hmm. Minimum is minimum of two random variables is also a function which hmm. we, which there is some input and there is some output. Hmm. Okay. So here the inputs are whatever the values x1 and x2 takes are the inputs. Mm -hmm. And it will take two inputs. And it will give me which one is the minimum as the output. So that's okay. a function, right? Hmm. Okay. So here also entries are min of x1 to x2. So now what is the minimum value of 1 comma 1? So this is min of 1 comma 1. 1. What will be the minimum of 1 comma 1 which it will be 1. Similarly, what will be the minimum of, so this is minimum of 2 comma 1. What will be the minimum of 2 comma 1? 1. 1. 1? 1. 1. Yeah, 1. Right? Uh, similarly, just tell me this minimum of 3 comma 1. 1. 1. 1. one. one, one. one. So you see when, when x2 is 1 and x1 is greater than 1, it will fall. So this, this, this is the thing I wanted to. So when x1 is greater than 1 and x2 is 1, then min of x1, x2 is 1. Correct? X1 uh, greater than and equal to 1 also. Ah, right? Equal to 1 also. Okay. This is this is okay? Yes. Hmm. 
Uh, similarly, when x1 is 1 and x2 is 2, what happens? Minimum is 1. Minimum is 1. One. When x1 is 1 and x2 is 3. Minimum is 1. 1. So similarly, the first column will also be 1 again. Yes. So what it says yes. is when x1 is 1 and x2 is greater than or equals to 1, then also the minimum is? 1. 1. one. Right? Now see, uh, let, let, let us fill the other other uh, entries also. 2 and 2. Minimum of 2 and 2? 2. 3 and 2? 2. 2. 4 and 2? 2. 2. 5 and 2? 2. 2 and 3? 2. 2. 2 and 4? 2. 2. 2 and 5? 2. 2 and 6? 2. 2. 2. Uh, now 3 and 3? 3. 3. 3. 3 and 4, 4 and 3 is 3, 5 and 3 is 3, 3, three and 4 is 3, 3, 3. See how, how I am filling the table. 4, 4, 4, 4, four, four. 5, 5, 5, 5. Okay. So now if you see the table itself, again, there is some contour or some uh, lines I can draw. So that one will, all the ones will stay on one line. All the twos will stay on one line. So like this. So what lines are there? Or general vertical. Like this. Like this. Like this. Can I? So these are the lines. Right, this 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 line is like minimum of x1, x2 is 1, and this is like minimum of x1, x2 is 4. Correct? So this this each of the line will represent one particular value. Okay. Now look at one particular line. Okay. So now see, as I said, for first first thing, first line itself. So whenever x1 is greater than or equals to 1 and x2 is equal to 1, my min is equals to 1. When x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is greater than or equals to 1, my min is equal to 1. Correct? So, how can I generalize this? So, if I look at the probability that min of x1 comma x2 being equal to 1, that means I will I just write write it down in the cases. Whenever x1 is 1 and x2 is 1, my min will be 1. So, this is one case. And the other case is whenever x1 is 1, but x2 is greater than 1. Okay. This is also a case. Third case also. When the third case is whenever x1 is greater than 1 and x2 is equal to 1. So this is also case. So that means if you see the line, this lines here. So the bent entry is the entry which is associated to this first case. Okay. So this is this is x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1. And the, the rest, so leaving that apart, if you see the row, row entries row 1s. So, this says x, x1s are greater than 1 and x2 is 1. So, there are 4 possible cases. I just match the 4 possible cases into 1 case. So, whenever x1 is 1 and x2 is greater, sorry, whenever x1 is, x2 is 1 and x1 is greater than 1, if I see the cases, these are the only 4 possible cases. And yes. I match these cases into 1. And when I look at the column now, this is the case where x1 is 1 and x2 is greater than 1. Greater than 1. Greater than 1. So, this is like this case. So, I matched all these 5 cases into 1 case and calling it as like this. Okay. So, not only 1, I can generalize it to any. Right. Instead of 1, I can write when will probability that min of 
x1 comma x2 be equal to some k so in place of 1 just put k that's it so either it should be probability that x1 the case is probability that x1 is k and x2 is k plus or x1 should be k and x2 should be greater than k so in these cases also the minimum value will be k plus probability that or x1 is greater than k and x2 is equal to k so this is the distribution of min of x1 x2 is equal to so this is the distribution distribution of function which is min of x1 x2 okay that's it this k is like uh, this case maybe comes from something like this so i don't okay i just compute it's like i don't want to give a general statement but k k is uh, from either range of x1 or range of x2 whichever is smaller mm, excuse me mm. sir sir can you please also elaborate like how uh, the you know uh, when we write like uh, if it is like let's say p uh, f of min of x is equal to p of x of min less than equal to x and then we derive the formula for that uh, so uh, like that is so a CDF. cdf cdf yes sir. so can you please elaborate that one at the cdf yes okay. sir yes sir so for minimum only okay so right now we understood the distribution of uh, is equal to is like pmf we are going to get the pmf but we are interested to find the minimum of x1 and x2 is less than k is this what you want right yes sir yes, sir. Hmm. so less than or equal to less than or equal to equal to k ah okay less than or equal to k okay so I just want one thing instead of k here itself what is the probability that minimum of okay maybe what are the cases let us understand what are the possible cases such that minimum of x1 and x2 is less than or equal to let's say 3 so in this in this only x1 uh, x1 is equal to 3 x2 is equal to 3 so one three two three and so minimum should be three right Minim minimum should be three so then three four minimum and should be less than three zero. less than three then one yeah. three and two three and three three one three two three 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 all the no, columns no, no, right? one, 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 one one four three even four three is less than or equal to three less than three five three less than or equal to three so understand that means the minimum should be three right i mean minimum, minimum should be less than three less less than or equal to three. equal ah, to less three. than or equal to three so whatever i have uh circled, so sir, how come then four three will be there four three what is the minimum, minimum of four comma three? three is three okay three. okay okay yes yes so, three, so yes. whatever uh, silver lining I gave, uh, within that, all are possible is what I, I claim. So is that true or false? True. It is true, sir. So, so first thing is minimum of x1, x2 is less than or equals to 3 means either the minimum of x1, x2 is one or minimum can be equals to two, two. two or minimum can be three equal to three right so minimum being one means this trip this this cell inverted l 
okay these many cases are there minimum can be one so when x1 is one all uh, independent of x2 it is one right so similarly for two these many cases are there for three these many cases are there the only left out cases are what Four and five. Four and five. Right. Four and five. And if you observe, getting four and five for minimum, my x one and x two both are greater than or equals to four. Slightly, yes, slightly greater than k. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so this. Minimum being less than or equals to three, can I see the complement events like one minus of greater than or equal to four? Oh, so min greater than three. Ah, greater than or equal to four or greater than three. Yeah. Okay. So one minus of. So if I want probability of this, can I say one minus of this? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Hmm. And when will minimum of x one and x two be greater than three? So that is what I told. Uh, in order to get minimum as four or five, see the random variables x one and x two. They are taking values greater than or equals to four. Only then your minimum will be greater than four, greater than or equals to four. Okay. See here, uh, your entries of x two. So x two can take four, five, six. X one can take four, five. So both x one and x two should take values greater than three. Then only my minimum value be greater than three. Yes. No. Yes, sir. So this I can write as now. So when will minimum be minimum of x one, x two be greater than three? Yeah. Only if both of them are greater than three. Okay. Understood. Why can't I write? Why no, sir. I'm not getting. Sorry, ah. sir. I'm not getting. Okay. Maybe now I will. I will try to. So I am going to say this is x one, and this is x two. Okay. Where will the minimum of x one and x two be? So x one. X one. Yeah. Correct. So this this will if x one is lesser, this is this will be min of x one and x two. So that is okay. This is okay, right? Whichever is smaller, min min is okay, right? You can get the min. Yes, sir. Let me one. This is two. This is three, four, five. Okay. So now, if I say minimum of x one, x two should be less than or equals to three. If I say this. Where will my x one and x two can lie? Can lie. So it one. will lie uh, three and before three, like one two three. Ah, and my next question is whether both x one and x two should lie uh, less than three, or at least one of them should lie less than three. Which one of them? At my least question. one of them. Ah. At so least one of them. Ah, ah, ah. So if x one is here and x two is somewhere here, will my min of x one and x two is less than three, less than or equals to three? Yes, sir. x one yes, will be that. Hmm. That means it says that at least one of the random variable x one and x two should be less than or equals to three. At least one of them. Correct, right? sir. Yes, uh, sir. So what this says is this. This says is you, you either. X one should be less than or equals to three, and X two can also be less than or equals to three. This is also possible, right? Both being less than or equals yes, to three sir, is also possible. Yes, sir. Both can be possible. Or 
x1 less than or equals to 3 and x2 greater than 3 that is also possible this is also possible yes sir or x1 greater than 3 and x2 less than or equals less to than equal to 3 yes sir this is also possible this is also possible correct and what is the other case other left out case both are greater than 3 both are both are equal to 3 Both are greater than greater than three. Greater than three. Okay. Yeah. So is this a possible guess? No, no. No, right? So when I say probability that min of x one and x two is less than or equals to three, I have I should actually compute. These three probabilities, right? Yes, sir. Or else we can uh, do else, one minus that. Uh, or else thing. you can do one minus of. This is like large computation. So three yes, sir, value computation. Yes. So can I do one minus of probability that x one greater than three and x two greater than three? Yes, sir. Yes, Got right. It, sir. So yes, that is sir. what I have written directly. Yeah. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So that that's how it will be. Okay. 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 Then uh, let's end this session here. Right now, and I will try to upload these notes. Sir, we'll meet you in the session. next class, okay? Sir, huh? the next session is about solve with us. I solve guess. with us, and uh, I will I will ask the instructor to finish solve with us as early as possible and take some questions also. Yeah, actually, I have some questions regarding last two uh, lectures. I was not able to understand those conversions of exponential. Okay, okay. I will I will ask the instructor to uh, take. Uh, doubts also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay then. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you